for me, I think the biggest thing that football taught me was how to overcome adversity. At some point in your life, you're going to have some tough times. You have to have that next play mentality. That cohesiveness and that working together, that's really something special that you can't get in a lot of other areas. When you practice that and you live that in other phases of your life, it, it, it becomes second nature because all you know how to do is fight. But it's not an easy game. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You start to appreciate the, the smaller contributions that people make. You don't just look at the big one because you knew it took six or seven other guys who are unsung. And, uh, you know, you, you can't take shortcuts and be successful doing what they do to make it possible for the guy getting the press clippings or whatever it might be. In this game, whether it's as a coach or a player. So, um, I would certainly say that, um, you know, you definitely got a very quick lesson on how to overcome adversity playing football. Welcome to another edition of Talking Ball with the Czar. I'm Emory Hunt, the Czar of the Playbook, here on the campus of Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. with head football coach Mike Gutilius. That's right. Thanks for taking your time, coach. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the thing. You're, you're a new head coach here at Catholic, mm -hmm. first year, but you're not new to the program. No. You were a standout player here back in the early 90s. Uh, you have a lot of history here. What made this program the ideal fit for you, and why did you jump at this opportunity? Uh, some of the reasons I jumped to the opportunity were the same reasons I chose this place as a student athlete. Is uh, you know, this is a place that comes at education from a student-centered point of view. They uh, they come at it looking what's best for the student. How can they help them be the best they can be? They do that with athletics. They do it with academics. They do it with their spiritual life. And uh, when I saw that this position was open, I had a chance to apply for it. I told my wife, I said, this is the one I want. I'm unloading both barrels and we're going for it. Um, and, and was lucky enough to move ahead with it. But really, the, the real reason I wanted to come back, tying into all that, was that this was a place that helped me learn how to be a leader, how to do the right things, how to say no to some things that other people get to say yes to. And, uh, and, and learning that helped me be successful as a husband, as a father, and not now it's gonna go on to help me be successful as a head coach. Now you think a lot of young coaches tend to miss that big lesson because they'll probably jump at the first opportunity that comes their way? I think so. I think, uh, you know, Frosty Westering wrote a great book and he, he used to say the big time's where you're at. And so wherever you are, you bust your butt there and do what you can do and make, you know, pour yourself into that job and, and, the, and the right thing will pop open. You know, for a long time I thought, why haven't I gotten a head coach position? And I didn't apply for a lot, but I looked into a few of them and, uh, and the reason I didn't get them, I wasn't, it wasn't for me, this was for me. And so I think when I presented myself to them, that came through to the committee, to, to Mr. Sullivan, the athletic director, um, and to the other people who are involved in the search. So I think sometimes people take the first job that they can get and they then will wind up missing the job that they should have had. Coach Catholic has a strong and rich football history here. A lot of tradition that a lot of people don't know about. In the 1930s, you were a football power. You knocked off Ole Miss yeah. in the Orange Bowl, tied Arizona State in the Sun Bowl. Is tradition and history something that is, is one of your, your cornerstone foundations that you want to establish here and instill into your players? I think it's essential. I think football, um, what makes it so special is that, you know, the guys that have gone before you uh, you know, like the alums that want to come back and see those guys. They've done what these guys are doing now. They've worked hard. They've won. Um, but th to know that when you're on the team now, that somebody before you had success helps them see that, that that's, a, that's not an insurmountable thing. That's not something that's impossible here. You know, when I, when I played in 1989, we went eight and two. That was the most win since Dutch Bergman was the coach and they tied Arizona State in the Sun Bowl. I mean, that, that was, you know, that was huge then. And then uh, after that, Tom Clark came in and had tremendous success in the late 90s. They went to the playoffs and were champions. And, uh, you know, and that's, that, I want these guys to know that's not that far away. That is not crazy talk. Like, we are going to be a championship team. 
And that's because we have been already, the tradition is here, the school understands what winning does for a program for the university. And, uh, and, and so it's important that we tie into that tradition because it gives depth to what they're doing. You know, sometimes when you have to make decisions about, man, I gotta get that extra rep in or get that extra work in, you think about, well, do I wanna be like they were? Do I wanna have those wins? Do I want my name on the board? Do I wanna be that guy? And that, that helps you make those decisions to move forward, like go that much harder, take one more step, do it one more time. And what's good about that is that you guys still have a lot of these relics around. I saw coming in, mm -hmm. you have the 1934 sweater sitting in the hall. Yeah, it's awesome. They still have some of it, and there's some pictures of uh, the old stadium. You know, they used to be in the center of campus. Now the law school's on top of that. Uh, and you see there's these old pictures. They got Model A Fords out there and <laughs> raccoon coats and pennants. But, I mean, that's football. I mean, football, the, like... Uh, the rules might change a little bit, the equipment changes, but 11 men laying it on the line, blood, sweat, and tears, that never changes. Your defenses at Lindsey Wilson, your previous uh, place of employment, were outstanding. You won 2015 AFCA NAIA Coach of the Year because of it. So is it safe to say that here at Catholic, your foundation will be laid with this team on the defense side of football, and how important is it to develop that mindset, and how does defense actually help out your offense? Yeah, I, um, it's a cliche that defense wins championships. So I think I'm not saying anything crazy when I say, yeah, we're going we're gonna to build a defense because first thing you got to do is stop the other one from scoring. Because you can score, you know, you see it now um, in college football on Saturdays on ESPN. One, you know, there'll be games where somebody wins 62 to 61. You know, I mean, it's crazy. Like, all, you just keep scoring. But mm -hmm. to be able to stop the offense from getting in the end zone, now your offense gets empowered and they say, okay, we can take, you know, guys can take risks, they can take chances, they can try and make that extra yard. They're not worried about, um, you know, what we have to score because, we, you know, we've got to hit 70 to win the game. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a great defense, it allows the offense to, um, to be confident in what they're doing. And that confidence is everything for an offense to know they can go out and make plays and somebody's got their back. And the flip side thing is, you know, defensively, if you do give up a touchdown, having confidence that offense is going to go out and just get those points back, that, that's big. But the defensive mindset helps establish that personality of a football team. So uh, even with the spread offense we see today with the ball, you know, being dished around all over the field using the width and uh, the length of the field so much, if you don't have a physical defense that can run and tackle, your offense is not going to get used to that. And then you get to game day and they're not used to the speed. And so they, some of the timing is off. So I think having that defense that's dominant, that's fast, that's tough, um, that just helps your offense get that much better. So it's, it's important. You're a big philosophy guy as I am. I read a lot of philosophy books and I know you minored in philosophy in college. What's your coaching football philosophy as it pertains to program building here at Catholic? Uh, you know, without thinking of the X's and O's side of it, just looking at what what the philosophy really means is, is why, why are we doing it? You know, why are we doing it? And so that's the first thing you got to approach with is why. And so you look at what the team's about. Why is this team here? And, and we're here to try and reach excellence. And to do that, you, we use the, the medium of football. And so these guys learn, you know, football's one of the last games that has, teaches you delayed gratification. You've got 10 guaranteed opportunities at Division Three level in the regular season. You have to spend all year getting ready for 10 Saturdays. And that, that philosophy of, of, of am I willing to put myself second to the team? Am I willing to say there's more to do? Why am I doing this to make myself the best I can be? That's why, that's my philosophy. Is can, they, can they say something is bigger than me? And if they can, then we're going to have the right guys on the team that are going to help us win. So that, that really is the first philosophy, is, is that team principle. Why are we doing this? Because I want to be part of a team. That means I have to put myself second. Um, and if you can do that with football, you can do that in other things in your lives. And it, it helps them become better fathers, better husbands. Um, you know, it helps them in their relationship with God. If they can put themselves second to a team, they can do that for other things in their life. So that's really what football's about. That's, I mean, that's a really big picture answer, but uh, you know, it doesn't do with the X's and O's, but that's really the philosophy behind it is, why am I gonna do this? Why am I gonna sacrifice for only 10 opportunities? Well, so I can learn about who I am and how do I get to be the best person that I can be? And, and you do that through the medium of, of football. How often have you seen guys, or seen that transformation, let's say coming from a 17-year-old high school student to when they exit out as a senior, 
that light comes on to yeah. see that big picture of why the why of what they're doing. It's almost all of them. You know, and here we get the type of student that um, really they're much closer to that when they come in, mm -hmm. um, just just because the type of kid that, that fits in at Catholic U. Uh, but to to have them be able to go from asking that childish question of what's in it for me and asking that leadership question of how can I help you be the best you can be? Because as soon as you learn asking how I can help you, then you've kind of grown, to me you kind of grown up then. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying what's in it for me, you start asking how can I help you, then you've grown up. And you, I see that with you know, a lot of the guys that we have here now and other places I've been, the ones that are wildly successful after football are the ones who took that lesson and turned into it. And there's more than, you know, more than, more than, more get it than don't. So there's, you know, um, some won't get it, but the ones that do, you can just see them. They have that extra something about them. They walk in a room, they've got that aura. It's not cockiness, it's the, it's the leadership. They know how to carry the moment and they know how to help people. You talk about philosophy and, and the, the maturation process and the learning process, and we both know football is a game that definitely teaches you a lot of things. Yeah. What will be some of the lessons you think football has taught you? Wow, um, you know, football, more than anything else, has taught me about persistence and sticking to it and, and having grit and that uh, learning to overcome obstacles. You know, I mean, you look at, look at the Super Bowl this year, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, how easy would it have been to just slide away? Oh, it was a great year, it was a great year, but they didn't, you know? And uh, uh, you go through life and you have, you, have, you have people pass away, you have sickness, you have uh, you know, problems with your children, things happen that are challenging. You're not ready for that when you're 17, 18, 19. Really, you're not. Mm -hmm. But if you, you go through football and it challenges you and um, it, it forces you to say, I'm going to work this hard. I'm going to do something that's bigger than me. And when you do it, you learn that just staying with it and the hard work, eventually the success comes. It will come as long as you stick with it. And, and that's life. You know, if you, if you can stick with it long enough, you'll get there. You know, you'll get there. And it may not be the vision that you created in your mind, but when you're done and you look back on things, you say, that was good. You know, I, I, I had to get challenged. I had to have my feet held to the fire. And because that happened, I was able to deal with someone's sickness or someone, you know, passing away and those kind of things. And I knew that. And it's not the same. Football is not the same as those things in life. But it gives you a taste. And it lets you know, I can handle it. I'm strong enough. I can do this. And I think once you learn that you can do it, that confidence, that self-esteem you get from football, that really, I, I'm biased. I mean, I don't think any other sport does it in the same way. Yeah, um, I feel the same way too. Yeah. I think, you know, once you learn to do those things, it helps you down the road. And that's what football's done for me. You know, I, I'd love to say that, I, you know, I mean, and I've had a wonderful life, but just like everyone else, you don't get through this without getting a few, you know, chips and dings on you. And, uh, and football's what's really taught me that it doesn't matter as long as you just keep 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 it on, you, you'll be good. Now you think football, you think you would have gotten that life lesson eventually or did football help expedite that process? Yeah, I think everybody gets it eventually, mm -hmm. you know, it, but it comes sometimes in uh, in more bitter form because it is the, it's the real thing instead of football, which is real, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a game. Uh, but when you get it through football, you learn a little earlier and then you can start applying it and you can get, uh, you're right, it, it accelerates it. It makes you realize faster that it's about persistence and it's about sticking with things. Whereas when you get it with life, you, you know, if that's your first big challenge and it is as large as those life challenges are, you're maybe not as prepared as you would have been if you'd had the lessons of football. So I think it does, it kind of, it accelerates that process. Coach, you guys were in the ODAC, very strong football conference. Now mm -hmm. you're in the new MAC, another top quality football conference as well with the bowl tie-in. In, in addition to conference play. How mm -hmm. challenging is the new Mac and what do you see from the differences between both? Um, you know, I think um, leaving the ODAC was a decision that was, I would say more than anything else, academically motivated that the university thought that our footprint matched the schools in the new Mac a little bit better. And a lot of our student body comes from that part of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, so it fit well and it's, and, you know, there's always recruiting behind it. So I think that is definitely a big part of the picture. Um, but the, I mean, the, the new Mac has some schools that have, you know, great tradition. You got Coast Guard Academy, you got Springfield College, which at one point was a division two school. You have, uh, you know, it's academic schools at like MIT, Worcester Polytechnic, and uh, Norwich University, and Maine Maritime, um, Merchant Marine Academy in New York. So there's, these are all schools that have great tradition as well. Uh, for us, 
it's really just shifting which way the compass points, you know, as, as we're heading. Because uh, you go down to play Guilford in in the Carolinas, and that's a, a seven-hour trip or so from here. Well, you can go play the Coast Guard Academy in Connecticut, and it's less than that. So all we're doing is we're heading north instead of heading south. But we still will have some non-conference games against some ODAC opponents because it is a great relationship, uh, you know. So going forward, that'll still be the case. But. Um, I'm excited about the challenge of, of, of learning about some new teams that we haven't played. So the video isn't quite as broken down. Um, they don't know as much about me. I don't know as much about them. So it's going to be some, we're going to see some good football in terms of what's, what's your bread and butter. And teams are going to use their bread and butter because it's, we're figuring each other out. You won't have all those counter punches that you mm -hmm. get after that long-term relationship of knowing, oh, yeah, well, we did this to them six years ago, so now we know we can catch them on this trick play. You know, you don't have that yet. But uh, it's going to be more about lining up and seeing where everybody stands in, in physicality and their, uh, their development schematically. Coach, it's a great campus. I've toured the campus, seen you know the stadium, new press box, amazing facilities here at Catholic. And so I know the benefits, but why would a student athlete with all these choices they have nowadays and they can visit a school at their, with, with their phones? Um, but why would a student athlete choose Catholic University? I think um, you know the first side of it is the, the student side first. You you want to make a, a 40 year decision, not a four year decision. You want to look at you know when I go to school, what is it for? Uh, and I think our facilities are awesome, you know. But when you're 55 and you're talking about why you chose a college, please let it be because of what you learned there. Not that they had field turf that was brand new like we have. Okay, please let it be that they chose to be an engineer or an architect or, you know, we're going to be a biomedical engineer or something like that. Let make that be a decision. Don't tell them because they had the best, you know, press box. I don't, that's not why you should choose. But at Catholic, you have those things and the education. So these things go together and we don't see, we don't see it as separate. What we do on, on, the, on the football field is just part of their education. It, it's, uh, you know, the athletic side gives them like I've talked about, that self-esteem, that confidence, that grit that they can take into their professional life. It's just another tool in the toolbox. So, you know, the classroom, they learn a lot of the things that, that they need to know to be successful professionally from, from a knowledge base. The athletic side is what they're going to learn, you know, about teamwork, discipline, hard work. Um, and that's, that's indispensable. It helps them set them above. But, you know, at Catholic, we come at it a little bit differently. Um, we don't so much go out and try and sell our program because we don't need to sell. What we do is we present who we are mm -hmm. and we find guys that want what we have. And so if you, if we have guys, you know, guys that want to get a great degree, that want to win championships, that want to graduate as a leader, then they belong here. You know, if they want to go be the Madden champion of the dorm, they're not going to get along with us real well. But if they want to be excellent, then, then this is a fit for them. And so that's why I think people should choose it because they're going to be challenged. And, and anything worth having takes, you know, hard work. But if you want to be challenged, if you want to win championships, get that, that upper level degree, uh, you know, and learn how to serve others, this is the right place for the people that want to do that. It's a great university, a lot of history, a lot of tradition. Yeah. Dope helmets you guys have here. I have to mention that. It's pretty uh, yeah. nice helmets you guys. But I do appreciate you taking time to show me around campus. No, thank you so much. Well. This has been great. I really appreciate you coming. Well, wish you yeah. best luck in your new career as the head coach at Catholic University. Thank you very much.